Hey, it's John Nolan here. One of the most important things in my life is the health and well-being of my family. And one of the products that we absolutely love to use and have had amazing results with is Z-Stack. It's Dr. Zelenko's Immuna Booster and it really, really does the job absolutely well. Now, as most of you know, Dr. Zelenko recently passed away, but he's left behind a legacy with Z-Stack and his other products and also the Dr. Zelenko Freedom Foundation. So every time you purchase Z-Stack to help boost your immune system and the immune system of your family, 10% of the profits will also automatically go to the Freedom Foundation. So I encourage you to check it out, Z-Stack by Dr. Zelenko. Use the link and the coupon code in the description, save and also help the foundation. Hey, hey, Inspired Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for joining us again for an inspired conversation. And today we're super excited to welcome back one of our heroes. Uh, you could call him the godfather of the truth and freedom movement. And thank you so much for coming back, David Icke. We're so excited to have you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, mate. Uh, it's our honor and pleasure. David, today's a special day. Your new book, The Trap, is out and you've been writing uh, like crazy as far as I know. I've been getting emails from your people. David is still writing. David is working on this book and it's finished and out today. What can we expect from The Trap? I can only assume another blockbuster, an absolute uh, amazing book. It's called The Trap and it's uh, subtitled What It Is, How It Works and How We Escape Its Illusions. And, you know, I think the um, the biggest trap, if you like, that researchers and seekers of truth can fall into is reaching at any point the idea that they've got it. Um, we're not um, awake, we're awakening. So when people say I woke up, yes, okay, but you, you, you're still awakening after that. Because as Socrates said in ancient Greece, or was supposed to have done, wisdom is knowing how little we know. Uh, and so I've always gone on that basis that whatever we think we know, there's always more to know. I mean, that's the big truth that's without question true. And so I've gone on going deeper in the rabbit hole and asking where all this is coming from, what's going on in the world today. Because I concluded a very long time ago, back in the 1990s, when I was researching this and putting together the names, dates, places, level of information, that there's no way it could be orchestrated purely by people sitting around the table deciding their next move. It's much bigger than that. So how big and um, where does it go? Where does it come from? And the, the sequence of my life since I had my initial head blown off awakening in 1990, 1991, um, it was um, uh, a pursuit of where this came from. And it was the knowledge that what we see and therefore think we know about what's going on is only a fractional part of what there is to know. And so what I've done uh, over the last 32 years is span out from just the daily news of events and what's happening, what Klaus Schwab has said or Gates has said or any of these people. And I want to know what's behind them. And so I've been on this journey going deeper and deeper in the rabbit hole that started off basically looking at the names, dates, places, this world, what can be seen level. And then I, I went deeper and I realized that um, beyond the, the Gateses and the, the Swabs and the what I call the global cult, the global secret society network through which this is all orchestrated, 
was a non-human force uh, that was manipulating human society to its own ends. And I think that absolutely since the COVID era began, more and more people have started to realize, I've certainly experienced and noticed this, that the agenda that's unfolding is anti-human. Every area of life that is essential to humans, whether it's water, whether it's food, whether it's the atmosphere that's being changed by technologically generated radiation, um, even the nature of the body being manipulated by these uh, synthetic MNRA. All these different uh, essential areas of human life are being targeted. And thus, it's an anti-human agenda. And a lot more people than ever before, far more, are starting to say, well, well, maybe that's because, as that mad guy Ike says, behind this is a non-human force. So that's where I was, um, I was looking at until the last year when I started to go deeper and what turned out was the trap. And I guess um, to start is to go back to just after the turn of the millennium, when I, I just got so powerfully, you know, a, a kind of knowing out of nowhere that we live in a simulation the uh, technologically massively advanced version of a, a virtual reality computer game. And what came to me equally strongly was that the limits of the simulation at this level that we're aware of is the speed of light. And 20 years later, in the spring of 2021, there was an article in the mainstream scientific magazine, um, Scientific American, by a scientist academic, uh, concluding, he said, that he believed we live in a simulation. And he believed that the limits of it were the speed of light, which is what I said 20 years before. And the way he explained it, and I think he's absolutely right, is that the limit of what we call the speed of light is the processing speed of the simulation. And so if you are only aware and you're mesmerized by the simulation and all the information that it's feeding us, because it's not a physical construct simulation, it's an information simulation, just like putting a headset on your brain is being fed information, your senses are being fed information, and they give you a different reality. Something I said um, way back again around the turn of the millennium was that what we call the laws of physics are actually the rules of the simulation that have been encoded into it. That's one reason why when near-death experiences leave the body, they experience a different reality. And I'll come to that in a minute because that's very much part of what's in the trap. But it's a very different reality. And clearly from what's described, the laws of physics are very different to what they are in this level that we experience through the five senses, what I call body-mind. Um, and this writer of this Scientific American article was making the same point 20 years later, that the laws of physics, as we call them, are actually just the encoded rules of the simulation. And as he pointed out quite rightly, again, it's that you can encode whatever rules and laws that you want in your game, but you're still going to be limited by the processing speed of the computer system or whatever you're working with. And that's what he said was the speed of light. So I was, I was long exploring all this um, side of things. And then in the last couple of years, 
as I explain in the book, uh, I mean, it's a long story, fascinating story, mind. Uh, a lot of things have been happening to me that have been pointing me in um, a very clear direction. And it's this, that if we break up the different levels of reality and make it real simple, let's call this world of the scene, what we call the human world. Let's call it the third dimension. Um, there are other dimensions beyond that. Now, people often, when they think of other dimensions, they think, well, other dimensions are way out there, like way out there. And of course, in frequency terms, compared with the frequency here, compared with the frequency there, they are way out there, some of them. They really are, because this is, a, this is a low frequency world. But there are other frequency bands, call them dimensions, which are very much closer to this one. And there's one which the spiritual arena and ancient cultures and et cetera, together, they call it the astral. Uh, I, I call it in the book, um, the astral, yes, but I call it the, the fourth dimension. And then there's beyond that, there's what I call in the book, the fifth dimension. And that is beyond the simulation. That is outside the simulation. So if you, if you awaken, this is what I think awakening is, you awaken to expand your consciousness beyond the third dimension, beyond the fourth dimension, especially the lower ends of it, which I'll come to in a second, and you start to enter the realms of the, of the of, call it the fifth dimension, keep it simple, you're then tapping in to information, knowledge, awareness, knowing that is not being tampered with by the simulation. And that's what we call waking up. That's when people start to see things. Why didn't I see it before? Because you were within the simulated, manipulated reality before. So you, you might note that I'm talking about the simulation in the third dimension, but I'm also talking about going above the fourth dimension because that certainly a significant part of it, at least, is also in the simulation. Um, so... What this series of amazing synchronicities in my life in the last two years have pointed me to is that this reality we can see is being manipulated and this simulation controlled by and created by and projected from the lower levels of the fourth dimension, the lower astral, as the spiritual community would call it. And the lower astral is the realm of demons, demonic consciousness, distorted consciousness, uh, what people call lost souls. It's a mess. It's very low vibrational and it's very dark and it's very confusing and it's very chaotic. The more that I've followed the clues and uh, uncovered more and more about this, that so clear it is that this world is being manipulated from those lower levels of what people call the astral, the fourth dimension, which means that um, this cult that I've been exposing for 30 years, which is behind world events and the direction of the world and the chaos that's unfolding, is actually an extension, an expression of this lower astral um, consciousness and the entities that reside there. And so I then started looking at what we call reincarnation. Because my question then was, when I looked at the simulation part of this, and how so many people in the simulation, because of the way it's manipulated, don't have a nice time. <laughs> I mean, forget, forget the people in the Western world that are having a, you know, an okay time. Vast numbers of people in the Western world are not. But, let, you know, up to this point, when all the, the, the systematic destruction of society is underway and the economy. But up to that point, quite a few people in the West, were, well, they think that we're having a decent life. But you travel. You go to South America. You go to Central America. You go to the Middle East, you go to Africa, you go to vast parts of Asia, a lot of those people are not having a good time and they're not um, uh, having a life that they really like to uh, live. 
So why would people or consciousness, souls, if you like, want to come here for any reason? But the second thing, if you take reincarnation, is why would they keep coming back? <laughs> oh, no, I've had enough of that. I ain't going back there, mate. No way. But when I've looked at reincarnation, the evidence for it is very, very compelling. It's very, very, very solid when you, you look at the totality of it and all the experiences that people have had. So then I... Again, following the clues, which have become just part of my life in the last 32 years, I, um, I started questioning what the spirit world was. Um, because I, I read a lot about people who had been regressed through hypnosis, et cetera, by various um, psychiatrists, therapists, back to what they call the between life state. In other words, between experiences in this reality. And I started reading what people were saying and, and the common themes were very, very compelling. And when I was reading these things, I was thinking, but that's a hierarchical prison as well. People were, were talking about, oh, yeah, and then, then I have to go in front of elders to discuss my last life. And then I have to go to this kind of school to learn more about this, that, and the other. And you're going, what? We are consciousness. We are all that is, has been, and ever can be. We are spirit, eternal spirit, connected to all spirit. We are ultimately all that is, has been, and ever can be. What's all this about? And then I looked at reincarnation again, and I looked at the, the basic story of it, which we're asked to accept if you believe in it. I certainly do. I, you know, I think the, the, the evidence is very compelling. But hold on. Um, if you take the universe, the size of the universe, as projected by mainstream science, compared with that, Planet Earth is the equivalent of a billionth of a pinhead. So you're telling me that you have to um, keep coming back onto this billionth of a pinhead to learn lessons so that you can reach a state of enlightenment which allows you not to have to do that anymore. Right? Well, that makes no sense to me. I'm sorry. What was all infinity to explore, and you've got to do this, what a billionth of a pinhead. What? Uh, so that made no sense. But on the same time, reincarnation from the evidence that I've you know, looked at over many, many years, it does make sense that it's happening. So if I put reincarnation into another uh, context, what if that this level of the simulation is not the only level of the simulation. What if when you leave the body, if you leave it in a certain vibrational state, you're still in the simulation, you're just in other levels of it. And so what's happening is that people are being, or souls, consciousness, is being recycled in and out of this reality over and over again. And basically, one of the things that it's doing through all the emotional trauma, upset, and what have you that comes from that, and the way this world is structured, is that you're giving off low vibrational emotion and thought all the time. Depression, fear, the big one. Uh, anxiety, uh, all these low vibration emotions, resentment, hatred. And what, what, what do those e emotions resonate to in frequency terms? I say to the lower levels of the astral. That's, 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 that's what, where that uh, energy is going. Because Basically, to, to, to a very large extent, not absolutely in totality, but to a very, very large extent, 
if you can't see it, it's the fourth dimension or the lower fourth dimension. So you can feel emotion and you can sense thought and you can feel vibes coming off other people, but you can't see them. You can see the effect of them, but you can't see them. We can't see them because it's a lower fourth dimensional. If it's lower um, emotional states, it's a lower fourth dimensional um, expression uh, process. And what that's doing is feeding energy into this lower astral, which is the, the, the realm of that which is ultimately manipulating the world of the scene, the human world, via people like Schwab and Gates and all these other people. When you look at this global cult, this um, secret society network, it is serving the interests of this lower astral, lower fourth dimensional force. And we, by the effect of that manipulation, are feeding, empowering with our energy, that lower astral force, which obviously brings back the image of Morpheus in the matrix holding up the battery and saying the machines have turned humans into one of these. When people remember that first Matrix movie where you see the babies and the, the um, energy that's, um, that's being generated by the, the babies and what have you, is feeding the machines, it's empowering the machines. It's symbolically exactly what's, um, what's going on. So um, I explore all of this in the trap. And, um, you know, there's an, an, a very old esoteric concept, which you can find in, symbolized in other ways in different cultures, of what's called the ring pass knot, which is perceived as an energetic barrier beyond which you cannot pass unless you are in a certain high vibrational state, which comes from your perceptual state, which comes from your self-identity state. And it's interesting that in the official story of reincarnation, you have to keep reincarnating to, quote, learn lessons, to reach a state of enlightenment, a state of frequency, which allows you to break the cycle of reincarnation. Um, and um, the, the, the point being that how can you learn lessons, quote, if you keep coming back into this realm with the memory of the lessons you've already learned wiped? So you're basically starting with a blank sheet of paper. I mean, you, you can be influenced from the subconscious by previous lives, yes, and previous experiences, but you don't overwhelmingly consciously uh, know what has happened and what you've learned. So you're starting with a blank sheet of paper. So, so what, what do you mean learning lessons? And there was a, a, a situation I experienced um, in 90, no, 2003, when um, for the only time I took ayahuasca, the rainforest plant, the psychoactive drug in a rainforest in Brazil. And uh, for five hours one night, a very clear, took a female form, voice, gave me chapter and verse on the fact that this, is a, this whole reality we're experiencing is, is an illusion. And at one point, I was shown this field, just a you know, normal kind of field in the countryside. And there was a, a path, a mud path going across it. And then suddenly, people started falling out of the sky as I was watching this. And they were all falling onto the path. And they were all walking along the path. And more and more came, more and more came. And eventually, they started wearing the path away. And the path started getting deeper. And then it morphed into a, a record groove in one of the old Brian Vinyl records. And people were walking through this groove. It was dark. They couldn't see anything. And the implication of that, of the, what the voice said when that picture was being shown to me is that souls, consciousness, are coming in through reincarnation 
already pre-programmed from previous pre-programming or previous programming. And they lock into the program because they've been programmed before. And so far from reaching a point of enlightenment so that you can break out of the cycle, the vast majority are going deeper and deeper into the cycle because of, of, of the effects on them in terms of self-identity and perception of this constant experience of this world in its different forms. And, you know, for me, you know, I've been saying this all the way through. And even though I've got deeper and deeper in the rabbit hole with the trap, the answer is still the same. We are entrapped in terms of frequency, vibration, within this trap of reincarnation and this reality, this simulation, because we are manipulated not to reach a state of awareness, thus frequency, that allows us to get out of it. And so the answer is always the same, self-identity. You are not your body. That's an expression, very controversial, I know, but I, I have been. That's an expression of the simulation. It's the way the simula you are locked by the simulation into the simulation is through the body. And what they're doing now with this manipulation genetically is changing the body and making it even more of a, um, of a control system by the, by the simulation. You are not the labels of your body that uh, we're given to self-identify with. And of course, as you go deeper and deeper into this subdivision of identities, into this LGBTQ and on and on the bloody list of letters goes, you're creating more and more myopia personalities, which are taking you uh, further and further away from the, the reality that you are all that is, has been, and ever can be. And when you reach this, and this is happening to people now, my God, it is, uh, but it has to keep going. That's the point. Um, we're reaching the point now where more and more people are starting to re self identify, realize, remember who and what they are. And as they do so, as you expand your self-identity from I'm Ethel on the checkout to I am all that is, has been, and ever can be, um, having a brief experience called human, as that expansion of self-identity happens, so that expansion of frequency happens. It's one, one creates the other. And if you leave the body in a state of self-awareness of true I, then you're out of here. You're out of the trap. And that's what they do. That's the big, big, big revelation that this cult and its non human fourth dimensional astral masters don't want us to know. <laughs> wow, what a journey we just took. Um, David. <laughs> I, I love how uh, we asked our viewers and, and we got hundreds of responses, the questions, you know, that they want us to ask you. And you've answered about 60% of them just in this first answer here. And it, co it, it absolutely aligns with what our teachings, um, the things that we learned from our American Indian teachers. And, and Christine and I, my wife and I, we have the pleasure of being, being given that wisdom. And it was one, one of the things you just said absolutely aligns with what he taught us is that when you leave this body there will be a light right everybody describes this the light that you walk into and he said that's the trap do not yes walk. that's do, all in here <laughs> yes absolutely. do not he literally said it do not walk towards that first light you'll see your relatives you see that but that's not the real light he says there is a, you got to turn around and you can only do that when you leave this body without the arrogance and the ignorance that most people accumulate in their lifetime. You got to have that vibrational state that you talk about. So it absolutely 100% aligns with what you said. Um, I want to ask you something because this has been at least my experience for as far as I can remember, my life has gone in, in certain two states that keep switching and, and it's going upwards. There's always a period where I go within and I'm called to go within more meditation, more introspection, 
And I can then uh, go through the layers and perceive, as you say, reality with a greater perspective. And then I'm called to go more on the outside and apply that to the outside world or you know, disseminate information. How does that process work for you? How do you get these downloads, as you call them? Is that happening at random times or is it happening in meditation? What is your process for that? Well, um, I, I, I'd like to talk about the light as well uh, uh, as we go along. But Absolutely. Yeah, what's, um, what, what has happened to me uh, since 1990 is that, um, I mean, when I saw a psychic in 1990, first psychic I ever saw called Betty Shine, and this, uh, I started being told I was going to go on a world stage and reveal great secrets and all the stuff that's happened was coming through. This is what you're going to do. One of the things that came through from some source that she was connecting with was that you are going to be led to knowledge and at other times we'll put knowledge into your mind. And basically, you'll just know something and you won't know why you know it. And that has absolutely been what has happened to me in the last 32 years. Uh, the synchronicity of my life, because uh, this is my life. I mean, I, I, I spend every waking minute um, pursuing this. Um, and I think I, uh, uh, when I'm not awake, um, I think I'm pursuing it. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I have been led to uh, knowledge in the most synchronistic way. But in the first few years after 1990, 1991, very few years, I would be led to knowledge and then I would conclude what the situation was as a result of that knowledge, that information. And then it switched very, quite early, really, probably 94 at the latest, and I would know something. And then the names, dates, places, confirmation, this world information would follow. And that's what's been going on ever since. Uh, when I just said that we live in a simulation and uh, the, uh, the limit of it at this level is the speed of light, uh, that, that just came, I just knew it. And then and at that time, there was only one guy, I. I went looking for, you know, people that were saying the same. I only found one, a guy called Nick Bostrom at Oxford University. Uh, but he was talking about a, it was a simulation, quite possibly, but he, he wasn't seeing it in the same way that I do. But there was no one else. And now many, many, many increasing numbers of mainstream scientists have come out and said, it looks like we live in a simulation, not least because once you grasp that, and its implications, the so-called great mysteries of life disappear. Why things happen and how things are possible. Why things appear out of nowhere and, appear, uh, and disappear into nowhere. As people say, I saw this UFO, it came out of nowhere and disappeared into nowhere. All these things can be explained once you, um, you, you grasp that it's a, it's a simulation and this is uh, just a frequency band within it. Um, and I also, um, just get these, these knowings. And what, what I've been having since 1990 are what I call coma sleeps, where I'll just basically, in the middle of the day, I'll just go into a coma sleep, maybe 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. Um, and when I come out of it, and, and sometimes it takes a, almost as long to come out of it as, as, as you're in it, um, then you know something, you know you know something that you didn't know before, but you don't know what. And then in the days that pass, suddenly you're getting these insights out of nowhere, which you, you basically downloaded in the coma sleep. And uh, about, a, about a week ago, um, I went to have a sleep. I was just overwhelmed by just exhaustion. I could get my eyes open. So I went and laid on the bed about, I don't know, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I went into a coma sleep, the like of which even for me, I've never experienced. And I got up after about three hours and I walked into the front room and I sat down and I, I, was, I was still coming out of it. I was, re I was really still in it. And I, was, I, I, I tried to start, start a bit of work. 
No chance. I had to stand up and go back to bed. I was still in it. And I, I think it was another two hours I, I lay there in a coma sleep. And when I woke up, it took me a very long time to really come out of it. And ever since then, as the days have passed, I've had a stream of insights which has made what is happening and where it's coming from, how and why, more and more simple and crystal clear in my, in my mind. So, so this, and, and, and also I know a sequence because it's repeated over and over again. You, I'm sure you must have had the same, whereby suddenly a subject will come into your life out of nowhere, like for the first time. Oh, that's interesting. And then suddenly information about that same subject keeps coming to you from all angles from then on. This has happened to me so many times. Um, and uh, it's happened to me in, in the last 18 months, two years, in relation to this afterlife continuation of the simulation. Um, I, I, I came across it because of things that were happening in my life were very, very strange and paranormal, which I, I um, explained in what they were in the book. Um, and then once that subject of afterlife manipulation and where the manipulation is coming from, suddenly it's coming at me from all angles. Um, so that, that's how it, how, it, how it happens, really. And in the end, um, the confirmation of accuracy of the information uh, is basically decided by what happens. Yeah. So when I was saying about current events coming like 20, 20 25 years ago, um, it was like, yeah, oh yeah, you're mad and all that stuff. Um, and, and then they happen and you, you think, well, I was, I knew this was going to happen. And the same sequence that I knew this was going to happen is the sequence that's led me to write the trap about this afterworld control system. And you're absolutely right in what you're saying about this light I go into in the book, what this light actually is. You see, light, what is light? Well, what is the simulation, first of all? The simulation at this level is electromagnetic light, light. And, you know, when uh, it says in Genesis about God creating the world in seven days, let there be light. Um, I, I think what's, what's being described there is the creation of the simulation. Um, and uh, I've explained why I think that in the book. Um, and uh, it's, um, it's uh, an area that once you get into it, the mysteries of life, uh, there are endless. Oh, so that's what that is. So that's why they do that. So that's what that really means. Uh, and uh, it's it's something I've come to recognize because it's happened for so long and it's happened in this case again. And, you know, one of the things that I've really been guided to by this synchronicity and information coming on the same subject is that actually AI, which is now becoming more and more of the control system in the third dimension, the human world, is actually an extension of the AI that's running the simulation. And it's running the simulation from what we call the lower astral. And it's my view, uh, as I explain in the book, that every human life, every soul incarnation is monitored by it's not the same as the one in our world, but it's the, the, the theme is exactly the same. By a gigantic um, AI operation. It, everything is being recorded in AI. And, you know, people say, well, hold on a minute. That's ridiculous. That's not possible. 
Well, it is possible. <laughs> what's possible and what you believe is possible is not actually necessarily the same thing. But I, what I do is I, I, I point people to China, uh, 1.5 billion people, and the scale on which AI, just uh, human world AI, is tracking the population in enormous numbers in real time. Um, there's um, a, a, an, a, an operation in America called the Sentient World um, Simulation, which is a real-time simulation of what's happening in, in, in the world, minute by minute. All the information is being fed to it, and it's changing as the information is fed to it. And, it, you know, these patterns of what is going to happen, if things don't change on the basis of what's happening now, this will happen. That information is available to this cult. So they are able to look at what is happening now, how people are responding and all that, and say, well, if things are left as they are, this is what's going to happen. So that's not exactly what we want to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to tinker with, we're going to change the way things are now by our manipulation so that the projected outcome is the one that we absolutely do want. So they have that information to do that. This is where you're into, uh, you know, pre-crime and all that stuff, like, you know, minority report, that whole concept. Um, and then uh, when I was writing the book, I got this, this, this overwhelming feeling again, and I was, I was looking at this whole area that we're just talking about. And what I got over and over, Akashic Records, Akashic Records, Akashic Records, look at the Akashic Records. Now, I came across the Akashic Records when, you know, like in 1990, 91, when I was trying to understand what the hell was happening in my life. Um, but, but I didn't really look into it. And, you know, I just left it alone. And of course, it was popularized by Edgar Cayce about the Akashic Records. So I started reading about the Akashic Records in, in more detail when I was writing the book and this was happening to me. Um, and I, I was reading uh, actually on the Edgar Casey website um, how it was uh, being described in computer terms, in database terms, that the Akashic Records is like a database that records um, everything, every conversation, everything that's ever happened, everything has an Akashic record, uh, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And, and I looked at it and I thought, what they're calling the Akashic Records is the freaking database. It's the database. So the whole thing, this reality, this simulation, it's not people, you know, there's not, you know, non-human entities sitting there on a bloody piece of, of, of technology pressing buttons. It's run by AI. The very AI that's coming in, the very AI they want to connect to the human brain. Hello. Um, and... Everything is recorded. Everything about a soul's, quote, incarnation is known because it's on the database. So if you, if you believe in a certain deity, when you leave the body, AI in your reality will produce the deity. So near-death experiences say, a, a, a Christian will say, I saw Jesus. A Muslim might say, I saw Muhammad. Um, and you see loved ones and the loved ones you, you read all these things that near death experiences talk about you see loved ones and they they, they 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 draw you into the light the light tunnel now what happens again and again you 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 read these accounts they go through the tunnel and they feel this bliss absolutely a doddle to simulate uh through frequency manipulation. I, I, I met a mind controller in America some years ago, and he said, I could get any two people to fall deeply in love with each other, even though in normal terms, they couldn't stand each other and would be repulsed by each other just by stimulating certain chemicals in the brain, which they do through frequencies, <laughs> right? So th this manipulation is absolutely possible. So you see your loved one. And your loved one draws you up the tunnel. 
Now, what happens with their death experiences is... We had to cut it off here. As you know, David Icke would never censor himself, nor would we ever want him to, but what he is sharing simply cannot be said on this platform. So we encourage you to jump over to the Inspired Community on Locals to watch the full, uncensored, unfiltered, inspired conversation with David Icke. It is absolutely free of charge. All you need to do is create an account if you haven't yet. The link is in the description. Please listen with your spirit, watch with your spirit, and enjoy this beautiful conversation with David Icke.